Welcome to www.itvideocoach.com. This is a part two of eight series on Exchange Server 2007. We're specifically looking at LCR replication using mount points. This is part two of part eight, and we're looking at how to create the mount points in this particular video series. You can also find all my Exchange videos in Active Directory, Windows Server 2003 and 2008, up on YouTube tag under Grizzamore. Welcome back, everybody. This is part two of an eight-part series on how to configure LCR using mount points. So in part one, we were looking at how to create our disk drives. In part two, I'm going to show you how to take those disk drives and create mount points. Okay, a couple of things about mount points before we actually create them. First of all, when we take a look at our disk management, the volumes must be formatted as NTFS. So anytime you're working with mount points, make sure that your volumes are NTFS volumes. And we can see that the, the two volumes that we have created here are indeed NTFS volumes. So that we have established, which is good. So we have that. Uh, the other thing is just a concept of what a mount point is in the first place. And it's really a pretty straightforward concept. And I'm just gonna demonstrate it and explain as I go along. It's easier just to show you than explain it. So we're gonna right click on the volume and we're gonna create uh, change drive letters and pass. And we're going to click Add, and we're going to mount the following empty NTFS folder. So we're going to go to our C drive, and this is a recommended way to do this on an Exchange server, is make sure you create your uh, mount point folders that are empty on your C drive. So this is, again, this is not the actual storage group. This is just the name of the mount point, okay? We're going to call this storage group 3. That is not the actual storage groups. That is just the mount point that the storage group is going to use. Okay? So this volume, if I go back and look at it, is using that mount point. So when we create the actual storage group, we're going to point it, the log files, the system files, and the database are all going to be stored in this, storage, in this mount point. Okay? Which is called storage group 3. You could divide that up a little bit between log files and database if you wanted to. I'm not going to go that far with it, however. Uh, same thing here. I'm going to go to the LCR copy, change drive letters and paths, and click Add. And we're going to create a mount point here. So we go back to the C drive once again. Again, I'm not creating the storage group. This is just an empty folder that I'm going to mount. Okay. So this is copy of storage group 3. You can even call it LCR copy. L -C -L -C -R copy of storage group 3. Okay? And that matches the name of the volume. Okay, just remember this is the volume. That's not the actual storage group. This is the volume, not the storage group. This is a mount point. So any data written to that folder gets written to this drive. So how does the end user see this? From the end user perspective, or as the exchange administrator doing the exchange install, we're going to see that we have these two mount points. And during the installation of exchange, not the installation of exchange, but during the creation of the storage groups, we can then point to these mount points as we create our storage group. So as we create the storage groups, we can use these mount points. Now, you don't have to use mount points to create the LCR copy. But if you use full paths like, you know, E colon and F colon and a path, you know, sometimes these drive letters and paths get confusing. So the main concept behind the mount point is we can take the LCR copy once the original has died and we can retarget it to the other mount point so that it still appears to be the original data set with no change taking place. So it kind of hides kind of sort of the complexity. I mean, if you know what you're doing and you understand what a drive path is, you know, not using mount points is really not a big deal as long as you kind of write it down and keep track as you're going what's where so you don't accidentally delete something that you shouldn't or move something somewhere that you shouldn't. But for sure, the mount points really make it easy. And as I finish the demonstration, it's really going to make sense to how the mount point can really come in handy and make it really easy to recover your exchange database. I just love this feature. 
This is so easy to set up, it's so easy to do. Uh, a little bit of playing around and testing with it in a lab though would be good, okay? Make sure you got it fully down. So we have our two mount points created. At this point, now we're ready to create our storage group. So come back for part three in the next video and look to see how we actually create the storage group to use the mount points.